Is Stalker Shadow of Chernobyl the most atmospheric game ever made? Join me on a trip into the zone tonight and find out. If you don't know that much about the Stalker series, here's what ChatGPT has to say. Stalker Shadow of Chernobyl is a 2007 first person shooter video game developed by GSC Game World and published by THQ. It is the first game in the Stalker series. The game is set in the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone, a heavily irradiated area in Ukraine that was the site of the Chernobyl power plant disaster in 1986. The player takes on the role of a stalker. A person who illegally enters the zone in search of valuable artifacts. And you know, I think that was close enough. Um, that was close enough. Uh, before we get into it, I just want to thank you guys for 340 subscribers. That is pretty awesome. I didn't think I'd get that many, especially with only a few videos and some random shorts. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider as it's free and helps the Lander faction grow even stronger. Now to Stalker and how fucking great its atmosphere is. So one of the things that makes Shadow of Chernobyl so good is its atmospheric setting. The zone is such a desolate, dangerous place, and the game does an excellent job of capturing that feeling. The player is constantly in danger from mutants, anomalies, and other hazards. The world is so gritty and unforgiving, but yet it's also beautiful and haunting. I love seeing the handfuls of stalkers huddled around campfires playing guitar, playing harmonica. I love creeping around the desolate buildings as my heart rate rises at every faint sound. Zone is such a unique experience, unlike any other game world I've come across, really. Uh, it is not procedurally generated, but instead handcrafted by the developers. The small details add so much to the immersion, and it's obvious that almost each one was carefully considered. This makes the zone feel real, lived in. There are no endless AI worlds here, or endless blocky maps, the effort that was put into making the zone feel this way and it's truly appreciated and it makes for one of the most immersive experiences I've had in gaming. The player can see the effects of the radiation on the environment and the buildings are all in various states of despair. The Stalker series is often referenced for its great atmosphere and Shadow of Chernobyl is the pinnacle of atmosphere. The player will never forget their time in the zone. Just as you start to feel confident about your chance of surviving the zone, you'll choose to complete a mission or maybe just explore. Uh, this will take you to some of the interiors of the game. They're terrifying interiors. They're made of labs, bases, or even the Chernobyl power plant itself. As you enter these areas, you'll begin to notice some of the aging in the game and the graphics. It's a little older. But these in particular include an insane amount of detail that continue to make the game haunting and borderline terrifying at times. Imagine walking into an underground Soviet lab, one of my favorites. Uh, it'll be nearly pitch black with only a few random lights working to help you. You can see the bare minimum. Claustrophobia sets in as soon as you walk through the door. These tight, confined, cramped areas. A little bit further down the hallway, random objects start flying at you because poltergeists are attacking you. The game guides you down corridors and downstairs to a locked door that's being banged on to open up. All along the walls are covered in filth and you can almost smell the rancid decay, mold, and old age. If you don't back out and run away, you will eventually find an open room filled with old equipment and abandoned papers. You grab the documents that you need and head back into the claustrophobic, ever-shrinking hallways that feel never-ending. The same unstable, crumbling stairs you entered on. Hoping this trip was worth almost pooping your pants as on the way down. As the walls continue to close in on you and tighten, you feel like you're about to suffocate and finally you can see a light. The subtle creak of the Geiger counter refocuses you and you exit to breathe in the fresh radiation once again. Unless you run into a bunch of mutants when you load in, then you're gonna die. The game's atmosphere is also enhanced by its sound design. The zone is naturally a very quiet place as it's desolate. The player can often hear the wind blowing through the trees and the sound of their own footsteps, making the anxiety ever increasing. 
These factors help create a sense of isolation and loneliness. Other times you can hear the ambient sounds of storms off in the distance or quiet gunfire, or even mutants rustling about in the leaves and bushes. It's easy to pick out these sounds, but in game they can be so subtle, unlike the cricket sounds that are way, way too loud and kind of take away from the experience. In certain sections of the maps, you will notice this ambient music, which is so beautiful and carefully placed in to make you feel so immersed. Speaking of music, the main menu music straight from the start embodies this game so well. This haunting melody and sense of foreboding. It really sets the tone for the game and makes you feel like you're entering a dangerous and mysterious place. Overall, Stalker Shadow of Chernobyl is very atmospheric, probably the most atmospheric game I've ever played. The game's setting and sound design both contribute so heavily to creating a believable and immersive world. If you're looking for a game with great atmosphere, then the Stalker series is perfect, and Shadow of Chernobyl highlights how good atmosphere can be made in video games. It holds up better than most games even 16 years after launch. And not to mention, Stalker 2 comes out later this year, so you might as well grab these games. I think they're 20 bucks. Give them a playthrough before Stalker 2 comes out. I promise you will not regret it. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and if you agree or disagree with what I have to say, I try and respond to most of you. Uh, if you've watched this far, please consider leaving a like or subscribing, and check out my other videos. They're mostly all on Stalker. And as always, thank you for joining me on this journey into the zone. This has been Lunar JB. Good night.